Last weekend, SpaceX engineers completed a final flight readiness review for the massive Super Heavy and Starship launch system, declaring the vehicle ready to make its debut test flight. Concealing nothing, SpaceX founder Elon Musk announced the decision early Monday morning on Twitter, saying the launch could be less than two weeks away. Starship launch is trending towards near the end of the third week of April, Musk tweeted. Sources said SpaceX has been working closely with the Federal Aviation Administration to provide the necessary data about Starship's performance and its impacts on the area surrounding the launch site. There is an expectation that a launch license will be issued this week, but there is no guarantee that this will happen. SpaceX also plans one final test, a launch rehearsal during the week. The company has three road closures all for non-flight testing activities from 12 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Tuesday to Thursday. This could happen today. During this test, the rocket's first and second stages will be fueled as if they were going to launch, but the rocket's engines will not ignite. This test will increase the company's confidence in its ability to fuel the Starship launch system and ready it for liftoff on the day of the actual launch. Musk didn't give a more specific timetable, but he may well be targeting April 20th, which is a holiday for cannabis culture, and the billionaire entrepreneur likes making 420 references and jokes since he gave an apparent nod to the possibility of an April 20th launch in a tweet last month. In this flight test, if it proceeds nominally, the super heavy rocket will fire for a couple of minutes before separating from the upper stage and making a controlled descent into the Gulf of Mexico. Like SpaceX did with some of its early Falcon 9 rockets first stages, the company will monitor the vehicle's performance to see if SpaceX is ready to attempt a land-based landing on future missions. After separating from the super heavy rocket, the Starship's upper stage will seek to reach orbital velocity before re-entering the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. SpaceX plans to land Starship vertically into the ocean north of the Hawaiian Islands. This test flight will carry no payloads. Indeed, the sole purpose is to test the rockets, their engines, and the capability of the vehicles to re-enter Earth's atmosphere and make a controlled landing. SpaceX engineers have a million questions for which they seek data. Can the tall rocket clear the launch tower, at least? Will the vehicle's 33 main engines fire long enough to put Starship into its planned trajectory? Will Starship's engines even ignite? Can the vehicle survive the harsh conditions of re-entry? How intact will everything be once it reaches the ocean? Well, perhaps very soon, we may have some answers. However, once again, I must remind you, SpaceX isn't entirely in control of the schedule. The company is still waiting on an orbital launch license from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, so you probably shouldn't book any flights to South Texas just yet. Now, if you haven't felt the pure excitement that the Starship flight will provide, take a look at this. SpaceX just shared an inspiring Starship mission to Mars video animation. SpaceX's founder Elon Musk is hellbent on sending humans to Mars. He envisions a fleet of Starships lifting off with hundreds of passengers to build a self-sustaining settlement on the Red Planet. It sounds like something that only happens in sci-fi films, but his aerospace company runs around the clock operations to actually make this ambitious endeavor a reality. You want to wake up in the morning and think the future is going to be great. Um, and that's what, uh, what being a spacefaring civilization is all about. It's about believing in, in the future and, and thinking that the future will be better than the past. And I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. Mars is a great candidate for becoming a second home planet for humanity. At an average distance of 140 million miles, Mars is one of the Earth's closest habitable neighbors, says SpaceX on its website. Mars is about half again as far from the sun as Earth is, so it still has decent sunlight. It's a little cold, but we can warm it up. Its atmosphere is primarily CO2, or carbon dioxide, with some nitrogen and argon, and a few other trace elements, which means that we can grow plants on Mars just by compressing the atmosphere. Gravity on Mars is about 38% of that on Earth, so you would be able to lift heavy things and bound around. Furthermore, the day is remarkably close to that of Earth. Monday, April 10th, SpaceX shared an inspiring video animation via YouTube called Starship Mission to Mars, which gives a brief glimpse of how the Starship launch system will operate when it eventually embarks on a voyage to the Red Planet from the Starbase launch site. 
The video animation includes a digital depiction of two Starship launch towers at Starbase illuminated with cool neon blue lights, which makes it look sci-fi futuristic, almost cyberpunk if you will. In the video, SpaceX also demonstrates how Starship will be refueled in low Earth orbit with another Starship that will act as a tank to carry propellant so that the ships can embark on the long duration voyage to Mars. A voyage to Mars would last approximately 6 to 8 months depending on how far Mars is from Earth when it lifts off. Starship is destined to become the world's largest, most powerful rocket ever developed. Each ship will be capable of transporting at least 150 tons of cargo or 100 passengers. Musk previously mentioned that Starship will have private cabins for sleeping and also a recreational area where the crew can hang out during their journey. The first Starships can also initially serve as living quarters on Mars because the passenger ships will have life support systems. Ultimately, a fleet of starships is needed to deliver megatons of useful cargo to build Mars Base Alpha. SpaceX is still developing the launch system and aims to perform the first ever uncrewed orbital flight test later this month. The test flight will help engineers gather data to improve the rocket ship's design and speed up its development. And for our last update, Congress is wondering why NASA's headquarters is 69% empty of employees. The House's Committee of Science, Space, and Technology penned a letter to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson asking why most NASA headquarters staff are still remote. This change should have been reverted after President Biden announced an end to the pandemic. Four years ago, the world changed forever with the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of the staff moved to work from home for what was thought to be only two weeks, but many weeks later, still they remain. However, a year after President Biden called for the return to in-person work for federal employees, according to the committee's letter, only 31% of NASA headquarters staff showed up to the office. The committee now wants answers because, unlike commercial business, NASA can't close down its office for fear of losing critical political support. In the letter, the committee members call for Nelson to answer why the move back to office work has been so slow at the headquarters and provide similar numbers for all NASA centers. It's important to note that NASA headquarters majorly does a lot of traditional office work compared to sites like Johnson and Kennedy Space Center, which needs their employees on site to complete their work. In the letter, the House Committee refers to a, re to a report on why NASA's Psyche mission was delayed. One problem in the report stated the need to reduce remote and hybrid work on the Psyche mission and reestablish informal communications such as walking the floor and drop-in discussions. The committee has required a response from Nelson by April 18th with updated numbers for 2023. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.